<clears throat> okay, so I think we're live now. Um, so we have God's Entry. We have Koya, Daniel Lee, Danny the Bull. Um, <clears throat> so today we're just going to be going through a market overview with God's Entry, because um, obviously quite a lot of interesting stuff has been happening in the markets. Um, so we recently did a session where we went through uh, mostly kind of charting support and resistance. Um, but this time we're going to go through some, uh, well, well, we'll see what we go through. Um, so I think there were a few quick market overview. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. So I'll kind of bring up questions periodically. Um, let me just pull up the comments. Okay. So. Ross. Here we'll go to okay. What I'll do is I'll jump over to Omi because I know everybody wants Omi right off the bat. So yeah, we'll give him. Yeah. Okay, we'll start with Omi. Um, so Russ kind of asked the question on Omi. Do you think we saw the bottom at triple zero seven four? Uh, you know, no. I mean, it could be at the bottom, but you know, is it a confirmed bottom? No. Really depends what happens on the overall markets at this point in time. We still have traditional markets and obviously Bitcoin. We're gonna follow their lead. What right now? What would you look out for for a confirmed bottom? Mm, I would like to see. Well, for Omi itself, I'd like to see some sort of bottom reversal pattern. Like on a larger time frame, like on a daily, a weekly. I don't need small time frames, you know. I, I'd like to see some sort of double bottom wedge, like a descending wedge. Something that confirms yeah. a bottom. Look, right now we haven't confirmed anything. The only other thing so you want to see it come is, back. You want to see it come back and retest that and bounce off? Well here, let me move these uh bibs off for a second. So these two blue lines, I'm just identifying a range there. So that was the range that we left that we were trading in for quite some time. We were in that range. Uh, you know, 185 days, roughly. So it's a pretty big range. Uh, we have to get back into it and break out of it before I would say the bottom's really in. But generally what happens is when you leave these ranges, we usually go back to the scene of where we dropped out of. It's roughly, let me get rid of this right here. Oops. Get rid of this. So basically I got the bottom here. And I made a little range here at this bottom. So we have this little zone right here. So I'd like to see Omi get back above this shaded area. So, so Omi gets back above here. I'm just looking for a quick retest and go back down and test the bottom more or less. So at best I can see is go up here and then, you know, we come back here and make support and then go back up into here. Then I would start to get bullish. But until we get above the bottom of this range and back into it, the, the next move would probably be back down to test the bottom. So we drop from this area. So we should go back down. Oops, back down to here. I believe we're going back down here, yes. If not further, but you know. And if not, uh, clean this up real quick. So I would identify this now as a new range that we're in. So I would say from here to here. Right now we're in a small sub range below this range. So we could be in here for quite some time. I would like us to see us stay in here and build a base before we really come out of here. That would make more sense. So, so I see with Omi. I'm just, you know. Now, I've got a question about Omi. When you look at an asset like Omi with that has such little trading volume, because it has such little trading volume, do you like – Analyze it differently than you do something like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah, it's really hard to, you know, trust. It doesn't make normal patterns as another asset with a lot of volume. 
So I really just got to put it in ranges and use fibs. Uh, there's not enough. There's really not enough volume to make any like uh, normal patterns. It hasn't made a normal pattern yet, really, besides ranges. Support and resistance is about the only thing that works in fibs. So if you go to other assets, it makes other patterns and whatnot. But yeah, I, I see it's going back down, test the bottom, if not lower. I just want to be honest with everybody. You know, everybody gets really excited about all the fundamentals. I was talking to someone today from I'm a trader. So, and from my experience, fundamentals play out over months to years. They're not immediate. So you, just because you get good news doesn't mean we're going to go up, you know, it's that immediate, it's, you know, it takes time. So I tend to focus on the charts because they give me the short to midterm overview of what's going to happen. Fundamentals is for investing. Uh, he's asking about this bottom right here, this 0.5. This is my worst case scenario. If I, it goes below there, I'd be amazed, to be quite honest. But I, I see us staying in this range right now. I if you see it below, go below 0.5. Excuse me? Uh, did you say if you see it go below 0.005? No, I find it hard to believe it'll go below there. Mm. If it does, you know, anything can happen. Who's that? I think it's a uh, dinosaur. I think uh, dinosaur's mic has uh, got a lot of static on it. Okay. All right, so that's Omi. I think we'll be stuck in this range. I wouldn't be worried about putting all your money at one time. Just accumulate in DCA, you know, with a correct time horizon. You know, you gotta have like a 2025, 2026 outlook. That's the safest way to play it. You just accumulate if that's your play. I wouldn't worry about missing these low levels right now. Because I don't, the bottom of the market's not in, as far as I'm concerned, from what I see, rather. Now, let me jump to traditionals. Is there any other questions? Yeah, I had a quick question. You know, it seems like that massive sell volume is was what caused us to be in this tight range. Right. So, are we waiting for people to continually buy to actually break through the range you've listed below? Um, this one right here, the, yeah. the lower one. Yes. Let me, make it, let me make it a different color here. Well, the problem is there's not much enough volume to push the price up, you know. So you see all, what happened the other day. Somebody bought what one or two million of me that caused that massive spike. Is that what happened a couple like a few days ago? The spike right yeah, here. That was like a yeah. billion dollar, a billion OMI purchase, I think. Yeah, so uh, it was two billion. Days, yeah. All right. So, how much of, was that in the dollar value? It's like a million. I think that was one point six million total across ten days. Yeah, he moved the market with not too much. That's really not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. So it's good for him to accumulate and comes back down here. I'm sure he'll accumulate again. Uh, Some of you, when they do that, they've been playing the cycles for a long time. So he must understand the Bitcoin cycle. So he's probably not really worried about price too much. He just saw it as a good entry point, which it is, from my opinion, anyways. Any other questions? Before we go to another chart, the you know, only questions. Uh, yeah, let me see. Okay, uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, just feel free to put them in the chat, and then God's entry can uh, help go through them. <clears throat> All right. In the meantime, we're going to jump to a uh, Bitcoin. Let me go to this chart here. Oh yeah, let's do that. 
and try to remind everybody that I don't believe we're at the bottom yet. So that's why I'm not too, you know, I'm not in a rush to jump back into coins yet until at least Bitcoin is bottomed out. It just does make sense. I think Bitcoins were definitely coming down to this 10, like this 10 2, to this like 13 8 area. I believe we're definitely falling into that box. These are monthly candles. We just had a bearish engulfing candle. So that means continuation to the downside. And the higher the time frame, the more powerful it is. So we're definitely, you know, high probability, nothing's definite, but high probability we're coming down further. Uh, jump to here's another indicator this is the hash ribbons and you know it measures the hash rate and usually when we capitulate here let me just take this off for a second hold on so every time we capitulate or the hat but the miners are basically in trouble they're shutting off and they're you know they're selling bitcoin right now and that's usually the last phase of the bot till we get to the bottom of the cycles. The miners have to sell off, and that's how we capitulate to the bottom. And uh, it just crossed right here, if you can see. We just started. So last time we started, we are up there. We had a pretty big drop. You know, we dropped all the way down, 40%. I'm not saying we're going to drop 40%, but when they start to capitulate, it's just a sign that they're going to dump, generally. So every time I mark it out, you can see. Capitulate, dump. This one, right, somewhere within this week, it all happened in the same week, but it was another dump. Oh, let me move this over. This one, we just went up because it was the beginning of the bull run. But in a bear markets, it's not good when they don't. Like if you see here. On what, on what, on what time frame do they generally, does it take them to capitulate? Mine I would like. I like to see it on the weekly for this, the confirmation on the weekly, but it shows up right away on a daily. But I tend to look at this at the end of every week. What's false arson? Would you rather, would you risk selling any of you, of you, your, oh, right, <laughs> any of you right now to chain and accumulate in, at lower levels or just hold a DCA? No, at this point, you just DCA. You don't, you know, I wouldn't just accumulate. We have time. So, but here's what happens last time we were in a bear market. They started to capitulate. This was for the big dump. That's when we found them. I think that answers uh, Sean's question as well. Accumulate or wait for lower lows? Well, I'll be honest. OMI moves a little bit differently than the market at times. And I think these prices are pretty, you know, I mean, in a few years, these prices you're going to laugh about or even question to buy now or lower. It's going to seem silly. So you're better off just having a mindset of just DCA at any level. But I definitely think we're going lower. And that should bring OMI lower. But with not much volume in the market, and somebody can come in and spend $2 million and pump the price 40%. I can't predict that. <laughs> like, it's tough to predict that, you know? So, but I definitely see some more downside in overall markets. Let me uh, jump to tra traditional markets here for a second. So, let me put this here. So this is the SPY. We're, we're heavily correlated with this market. So over time, every time we come into this trend, we sell off. We come into this trend, this down trend right here, we sell off. We're coming into the trend again. Now, it could pump a little bit up. It could just trap everybody. That'd be called a bull trap. But 
Markets don't recover until they print money. Like we had, we've never had a market without them, you know, stimulus, some sort of quantitative easing. I mean, that's just the truth of it. We have no reason to go up right now. So they're just wearing everybody out as far as I'm concerned. Because, you know, bear markets are grueling. They just want people to keep capitulate. Would you capitulate? That's when we find a bottom. We haven't had a capitulation yet. What's the range for OMI? Current range for OMI? What is this? Point zero? We'll say triple zero seven to, we'll say right now, to one, double zero one. That's the range. But, you know, it's a pretty nice range if you think about it. It's a fifty percent range. You can buy and sell it if you wanted to trade it, but I wouldn't. So I'm not trading only. If I, I'm not. I'll just buy some and hold it. Let me show bottom. That's something that's quite hard to predict. When yeah, bottom. yeah, I'm I'm more or less looking for like a reversal pattern. If we look over here, we'll go back to this filler break something here. These are my levels. So this was a COVID crash, right? They were lowering rates the whole time in a COVID crash. You know, when we went up, when stimulus happened. So the rates is just a smoke screen. It doesn't mean anything. What matters is when they print money. And so when they say the Fed pivots, that means get ready. They're really going to dump the market from my perspective <laughs> that's how it's always been in the past so it's not going to change so i just be very careful you know just we have time i believe we have plenty of time yeah the real pivot that is to quantitative easing to QE. Right. yeah when they say the fed pivot that's just i don't know i don't know why they lie to people i mean it's really obvious I mean, it has nothing to do with the rates it has more so to do with printing money Now, the markets try to front run that, but you know, that's just a perfect example. And I think that worst case scenario for the spies, we could come all the way back down to the COVID bottom. And that would be pretty catastrophic. But I definitely think we're coming at least down to the bare minimum to this level, to like 3,200 or 2,800. This would be extreme, but that's the worst case scenario. Now we get back into a bull market. We get above this trend right here. Let me turn this off. We have to make a higher high at some point. So we have to get back. Hold on a second. Let me do this. Open the screen up a little bit. The market needs to come up here, make a bottom, get some support, and start moving its way up. So we got to make a higher high here at some point. We haven't done that yet. And we haven't broken the trend. So we just got to keep going with the trend until it ends. That's what I see in the market. You know, I just be very cautious. No oh, Bitcoin. Where are we at with Bitcoin? Like we could be, like I said, in this pattern for quite some time. So we work our way down to these these areas. I think the coin's gonna there we go. I'll show this and I answer questions. You know, at best, I think Bitcoin could go up to like 18.1, possibly up to like 19. But I think we'll get rejected here and head our way back down. Because you got all this support i mean all this resi uh, resistance now because it was support now it's turned resistance so i don't really see us getting past like like 18.1 that would be where i would short but would you say would you go down lower than that 16.7 level once we reverse down we could we go down 
we're getting mixed signals right now. Is everything, all the indicators are bullish? This indicator is saying we should, we could get a nice pop, nice little rally. But they've been saying that for months. So. so now you say you don't really look at fundamentals, but now with like CPI data coming out and trending down a little and the rate hikes coming down a little, do you think that caused, does that factor into your analysis, like in terms of short term? We pop a little and then sell off and head back down. Yeah, for trading purposes, yeah. But because my thing is, you can't really trade off the of fundamentals. You can only invest off of them. So to me, I kind of block them out because it's like noise. Because they end up, you know, you'll make the wrong decision. Because how many times have we had had good news and we sell off? I mean, we've all experienced that. Hopefully, by now we realize that. So. Yeah, we could pop the market. The CPI comes in good. They talk about lowering rates. Yeah. But I think it's just going to be a bull trap. You've mentioned before how you don't like uh, people looking at the order book. And I was just kind of wondering, you know, what your thoughts were on that. You're more of a, like a price action person, right? Um, what's your rationale with all that? Well, because you got to realize these exchanges... We'll call them, there's like A level exchange and B, like A, A tier, B tier. A lot of the B tiers, they, they're trading against you. So a lot of those orders are just an algorithm to keep the price steady. So, and then a lot of guys can use order books to push a price up and they can just pull your, pull their orders and the price will drop. So it's just not a good, uh, good habit. Something I learned like a long time ago. I used to look at order books and I'm like, yeah, it's a waste of time because they can just pull their orders. So it's like, it's not credible information. In my, you know, from my point of view. So are our exchanges also using money to keep the price stable as well? Just to have a stable price. Is that a common thing exchanges do? It's not a, it's, I don't think it's a good practice, but they definitely do it. I didn't see that. Oh. JP asked quite a general question. Um, what do you reckon for tokens paired with USDT? Because there's a risk of USDT potentially collapsing. Personally, right now, I'm very cautious and uh, I'm not putting much on exchanges. To be quite honest. I'm still kind of waiting for things to cool down. Mm. If I'm going to buy a coin. Yeah. Omi is paired to ETH as well. Do you hold your capital? I hold it in cash. <laughs> Didn't understand it. Oh, it was just text to speech. That's why. <laughs> why I was like, what's going on? Weird. Right now, I'm just, PCA you know, from my best. experience in this crypto market, I would just be cautious right now. And if you buy a coin, pull it off the exchange and put it away in your wallet. You know, we don't know the bottom's in. We don't know what other turmoil is going to happen with other exchanges. Hmm. The pivot you know, is to pause and the cut is the U-turn. What does he mean by cut? Oh, when it can start cutting the rate. Oh, all right, kind of right, okay. Yeah, it's, but it's really not the U-turn. The U-turn is when everybody can pitch things like, okay, by the way, we're gonna print some cash. I and mean, that's just the truth. COVID was a perfect example. They cut rates so fast and it did nothing to the market. Mm. And if you go back in time, where's this chart? I had a chart. I don't have it available, but there's a chart that goes all the way back, you know, the last hundred years. Every time the Fed pivots, we drop the actual pivot. We have a 36 to 50 percent crash after that. And that's the problem. So that's kind of. Uh, Does the market tend to run right before a pivot? 
Yeah, because they want to get as much out, out of the market as they can. <laughs> right, shake people out. Yeah. The market's vicious if you really get into it. So you got to realize they got to push the price up because if somebody wants to exit their large position, they got to get everybody's emotion in so they can exit on them and vice versa. Because large market makers, they don't just make one entry. They might be making buys and sells over months of time. Yeah. I definitely see this going down. We could get a pump right now. We'll see. We got the data coming in the 13th and the 14th. We got CPI 13th and the Fed what, the 14th. So see how the market reacts. And it's actually been doing the opposite. Good news, we go down. Bad news, we go up. So it doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I showed all the charts. The bottom of the dollars going here. This is my target for the dollar. I still think we're going to get up here somehow. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what I'm worried about. And if the US dollar is going up, then that, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know for sure. Nothing's 100%. I think we're going to, this is, this pattern right here for the dollar, I took it from the last time we're at these levels. I took that pattern from here. They call it a fractal. Just playing around, trying to gauge when the market's going to top. But I took this fractal right here. And I just placed it over here. So that's the worst case scenario that could actually really happen. I don't think that's going to happen, but I like to know the worst case, so I prepared for it. Mm. That's just how I think. Yeah. And if something changes, that's great. As a trader and investor, I like to obviously, you know, I've learned over the years from many mistakes that I don't want to be biased in one direction. I want to see both directions all the time. Mm. For Bitcoin, what would you, what price would you like to see for potentially a new bull Between cycle? 10 and 13. Between 10 and 13. Okay. But I also want to see a nice reversal, some sort of reversal pattern, some sort of base being built. We're not just going to bounce. Bitcoin has never just bounced. Go this one. I mean, look, all the cycles, we hit the bottom here. We're down here for almost, almost eight, nine months. This one, we're down here for four months. That's what I was saying. It's not going to be a rush. We'll hit the bottom, we'll base out, and then off we go. We're just not going to reverse. The only reason that happened during COVID is because they printed so much money so fast. What you're going to have to do again. So, you're, so what's your expectation on um, the rest of this bear market? How long do you think it lasts? Well, based on that dollar chart, worst case scenario is 18 months. Uh, I say at least six more months. So within that time horizon, this is a little bit different bear market. You know, it's tough to read. You just got to realize Bitcoin so it's is six only... more. Sorry. I didn't hear you. Good. I was just saying, so six more months to get to bottom and then stay range bound for another right. period of time, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I can give you the best case scenario. Because they're going to have to do something here. But just showing us in this chart, as you can see, we don't have, you don't have to worry about missing the bottom. Just let's get to the bottom first. That was my point. Try to keep everybody calm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there's time to accumulate if that's your mission. Yeah, it's just it. We're, we're closer to the bottom than the top, that's for sure. Yeah. Any more questions? Where'd Kay go? We lost him. I think he dropped off. I think we lost him. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he bailed. I can't even see the questions. Uh, one question is, um, what do you value more, OMI or collectibles? That was directed to you. At this point, I mean, it's pretty tough. They're pretty cheap right now. I see more upside to uh, OMI, honestly. But who knows? The collectibles could actually go up before Omi at this rate. You know, that's a tough question to answer, actually. Because we don't do you know. I mean, do you also just yeah, do you also feel just more comfortable being an Omi because it's it's crypto as opposed to like a digital collectible that's kind of like a new asset class or whatever? No, that's kind of why I jumped into, you know, I believe in NFTs. I think that's the technology right. that we gained on this cycle. I have, you know. Pretty sizable vault. So I'm holding most of my stuff till it goes back up. I mean, I bought most of my collectibles off my OMI gains. So sometimes I kind of wish maybe I just kept my OMI gains. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but you know. Do you do you plan on playing those against each other once we have like OMI to NFT and you know digital collectibles? The collectibles pump. And sell off into Omi and vice versa, and pay, play those against each other like pair. I don't know if I would actually do that, I would just keep it separated and have a separate plan for each. But it depends how long the market's this slow. You know, you never know. You can always consolidate into Grails. You know, some Grails are really cheap right now. That's what I was doing. I sold off a few things to get more growth. For your OMI analysis. What happened? For your OMI analysis, are you not factoring in any of the effect of the utility and just looking purely at the um, price action? Me personally, I'm not going to block up fundamentals, right? Well, I already made that determination in the beginning. When I first got in 21, the fundamental part of it, I already came to that conclusion. And because uh, I only really trade Ethereum, Bitcoin, but I saw Omi and I was like, "Oh wow, this is going to be successful." From, my, from you know, from my standpoint, I mean, do you see yeah. Ethereum as having relative? Do you see Ethereum as having relative strength against Bitcoin? Yeah, I think we're going to. I think it's possible we flip soon in the next cycle. Yeah, you think next cycle. Yeah, I don't own any Bitcoin. I converted all my Bitcoin to Ethereum back in May when we started the bull market. I don't know if I ever actually own Bitcoin again. I don't see the purpose. Do you worry about um, regulation and classification as like to classify Ethereum as a security? I don't want to worry about it. But it happens, That's kind it of pushing me. That's pushing me into Bitcoin a little bit because at least I know that it's a commodity. Yeah, I just don't think that's going to be able to pull that off. I mean, yeah, you, you could be concerned about it, but I wouldn't worry about it to exactly what, you know, when it happens. I mean, right now I'm in mostly cash anyway. I'm waiting for yeah. the bottom. So I don't really have to make that decision right now. That's a good point to bring up. Uh, Daniel asked, does the market drop on a pivot because the Fed cuts rates or does the Fed cut rates because the market drops? Johnny, they cut rates because the market drops. Well, they're going to cut rates when inflation drops below the rates. That's when they'll start pausing. And they don't want to break, you know, they usually go till they break something. You know, they talk about this soft pivot thing or the soft landing. I don't think we've ever had one. 
We have, maybe I missed it. No, I don't think we've ever had one. Huh? I don't think we've ever had a soft landing. I just they don't they just don't want everybody to panic. Yeah. yeah that's why that's why they do it. We answered that question. Yeah, we answered that one. I mean, really, in this bear market, all you can really do is, you know, your goal is to have only in the future. Just accumulate. You shouldn't worry about the price. That's how you properly DCA. You just DCA, like, on a time. Say, I'm doing it every week, every month. Maybe wait for a red day. You don't let the price go up and go, oh, let me buy right now. That's the worst thing you can do. I think this is quite a general question as well. All right. Um, you know why? You can't really the bottom, can you? Because there's you're like chain link. There's sometimes there's outliers in the market. So if you believe that much into OMI, and you're at these levels, you don't want OMI to be one of those outliers, and you miss buying a bottom because you're waiting for the bottom. These are excellent numbers. I mean. But you don't buy the green day when we're down here and you're worried that's when you buy you don't you don't wait for the price go all right let me buy now because i don't i'm going to miss out you're not going to miss out on anything right now you know what was quite funny is because you mentioned chain link that omi whale who bought like the two million dollars worth of omi like quite recently if you look on his wallet the first thing he ever bought like hmm. it was like uh three four years ago was chain link and he bought 500,000 chain link tokens, which at the peak was worth like, I think it was like $20 million. Wow. And he still had them in his wallet. And then he'd been selling them like periodically. So from his very first purchase, he'd already like <laughs> basically wow. made a stupid yeah. return. Because in the bear market, sometimes we get outliers, you know, you might get a handful of coins that really don't run with the market. They run to their own beat. So. I don't know. I like VV and OMI because it's attached to a company that's actually producing income. Not many of these cryptos produce income. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, that's you try to think of how many companies, crypto coins, have a company that produces income. It'd be very few. Do you recommend, uh, <clears throat> I, I guess maybe a better question is, how do you recommend a beginner technical analyst um, get into charting or, or or trading? What's a good way to do that? Do you recommend using real money or just um, you know practicing with, with just data? How do you recommend that, doing that? Definitely answer your question. You definitely don't want to start with real money. All right. And that's kind of why I started a little group, because from my journey, I learned how to trade. I learned how to use indicators. I thought I knew how to chart. But at the end of the day, when I refined my skills, my skills that needed to refine was my charting skills. And that's the foundation. So that's why I'm trying to do a group to teach people how to actually read price action. Because that's the main component of this, is you got to trust your own. And so you got to trust your own lines. You know, when you, when you start charting, you got to trust it. And the only way to do that is repetitively do it over and over and over and watch the price action work within your lines. And the best way to do it is just chart, be in a community with other people so other people can, you know, help you correct your mistakes and you guys can show each other what you see. And then you kind of, that's how it goes. You know, you, need, you don't do it on your own. That's for sure. Definitely need help. So I suggest people to start first because that's what I wish I would have done differently through my, you know, my journey. I wish I just focus on charts than chasing these shiny objects with indicators. Like, so I don't what, really even need indicators anymore. So I, I was going to ask you, what do you like better, indicators or or yeah. charting? I guess what's your favorite or fun, what's the most fundamental charting strategy? And what is your 
most fundamental favorite indicator? I mean, now you support resistance, patterns, and RSI. That's all I need. You know, those which are kind of simple, but it works. You know, momentum, you know, you can look at momentum like stochastics. Uh, there's other indicators that help out, but really, you know, you just need support resistance and patterns with uh, RSI. It's pretty easy. It's pretty general, but it's good. Keep it simple. A lot of people complicate it. So, so patterns are, are very important for you, like, you know, like bull flag or, or yeah. I don't know. Just, okay. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you got the patterns. You got the uh, triangles. Then you got to know what patterns work with the current trend better than others. You know? Because uh, when you come to trading, there's just so many different styles of trading. You have range trading. You got trend trading. You got many different styles so every person isn't always good at everything so you got to find what's good for you and stick with that because some people once you get involved in this they want to learn every little detail and you, you don't need to really know it all you just need to know what works good for you and then you focus on that because you know that's kind of what i how i ended up where i was at and so i don't need all these tools i only need these three tools so let me just use this <laughs> I know how all the other tools work, you know, but yeah, a lot of traders, when they have a strategy, they use too many uh, parameters. I really only like three or four parameters at the most. Because if you're waiting for eight or 10 parameters to come in, you're never going to get a trade. If that made any sense, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think Dive Jedi is re essentially reiterating what God's Entry said. Like, this is a good point. If you expect only to go to one cent, then it doesn't really matter too much if you're buying at triple zero seven or triple zero nine. Yeah, so all you got to do is keep a BCA and lower your average. Good stuff. Learn risk management first and learn how to have different portfolios for different styles. Train for one and accumulate for another and learn from the best. That's good. I, you know, it's pretty well, well said. But all that comes afterwards. You got to learn how to chart first. If you can't learn how to read price action, you're leaning on everything and everyone else. I think price action is king. I mean, that's what they say anyway. The XY also closed below 200 moving average. It's done headed to 100 now. Okay. Yeah, we drop below it. Let's go back in time, see if it ever did it before in an uptrend. Let's find it, the last uptrend. I mean, you could call this an uptrend. We dip below, went back up. We dip below, went back up. Uh, I would say there's pretty strong support. I'm just climb up a little bit. 103.75. I would say we get a bounce there. there should be pretty strong support right there. So let's go look in history and uptrend when we drop below. Let's find another example. Here's one we drop below. We kept going up. 
I really don't use moving averages too much. That's not really, I mean, I use them on a higher time frames, but I don't use them for trading too much. Because they're lagging. Really, the style I like to do is be more predictive. So when a price action comes to where I think it's going to go, I can catch the trade. Like, I, I don't want to be forcing a trade. I want the trade to come to me. Oh, this is a good question. Um, I notice your charts never have volume on them. Why is that? I don't really use it. I don't really use it. I mean, you can use it. It works, you know. Like I said, every trader has their own tools that they're used to. But I look at volume when we get a big move. The only time I look at volume is when we get a big move. I want to see the volume for confirmation. Because if we get a big move and there's no volume there, it's it's not going to sustain. That's the only time I really use volume. That's a good tool. Thank you, Maxwell, for the uh, five dollar donation. Really appreciate it. And you call me Skywalker as well with the soup sticker. Other than crypto, what other investments do you have? Are your inv other investments better than crypto at this time? Only in crypto. <laughs> You're predominantly a crypto trader, right? You don't trade. Yeah, that's, too that's much. how I, you know. That's where I got my. Uh, that's how I got into the game. Was the crypto, so I fell in love with it. I just kind of stay away from traditional markets. You know, I don't see the purpose. I mean, for me, I'm trading so. You get more movement in crypto. Okay. I think we'll probably go for like another couple of minutes and then uh, we can close out there. Uh, so if there's any other questions that you guys have for God's Entry, then uh, just feel free to put them in the chat below and then we can try and answer them before we close out. Oh, it's a question. Um, how can you have more trust in OMI than in Bitcoin? I think they're only asking that because you uh, are I trading Bitcoin while you're paying OMI. It's not that I have more trust in OMI than Bitcoin. I have more trust in myself and my trading abilities. And I just kind of fell in love with OMI because of Vivi. You know, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Figure I helped Omi out. <laughs> but I kind of focus more on trading, you know. That's why I lean on. Omi is more like, you know, a retirement type plan. For me, I think I would say maybe a similar for you as well is the opportunity cost in Bit uh, in Omi. I just feel like there's more growth potential there in the short to midterm. Whereas exactly. Bitcoin, we kind of know it's you know eventually going to rest the market up with it. What well, you know what? I'm probably a little biased with the Bitcoin thing because I've been in crypto for so long, and by the time I really started to you know engage in trading and investing, I saw Bitcoin already made its move. You know, so that's why I jumped on Ethereum as you know the coin that I trade. So. I think Bitcoin has diminishing returns from here. It still has plenty of upside, but like you said, yeah, it's already made its major moves. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Bitcoin. You can store your money in it. I mean, but just me in a bear yeah. market, I'm not storing money in anything. You know, in any of these cryptos, it doesn't make sense. Cash is king. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to, you know. When did you uh, make the decision to pull out? Like, did you have a long term hold, you know, long term bags that you pulled out? And when did I you make that decision? I, I always. Well, here, I'll tell you 
I pulled out a lot on this drop. You know, back in uh, 21. So that was like I November? Quite, yeah, I made it quite a bit. No, back in, uh, this was May of 21. Oh, that's I the did first very, drop. Yeah, I did very well on this run up. But then I lost some of my gains. So kind of to be honest, it shook me a little bit because I worked so hard to make that money. But I more or less protected my capital at that point. And then I just went to trading. So I didn't really that's when I just was trading Omi. I got out, I had about 30 or 40 different coins, to be quite honest. At that point, I just went and just did Ethereum and Omi. Traded all the way up here. Missed the top. I was fully out in this area right here, around 51, 52. No, no. I was out a little bit. I was fully out here, around 48. That's why I just got out of the market altogether. So then once you see market reversal, you plan to have another long-term portfolio that you're going to take profits on next cycle? Is that how you plan it? Or are you going to just trade? Oh, no. I'm going to invest in a few coins. It makes it, you know, so they can work for themselves. Yeah. yeah. But you got to have a plan for taking profit. You know, I've been through these cycles so many times. And it's kind of why I try to help people out, too, because there's nothing worse. Because in 17, I made so much money on the way up. I took some profit and... Wrote a lot of money right down back. to the bottom. So yeah, every, every wave you got to learn. So hopefully some of the mistakes I, I had, I can help other people. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing to do is taking profits. You really have to develop a plan and stick to it and shed the emotion of like the euphoria when everything is running up. Yeah, it's, that's why the main thing is to have a plan before it goes up. So yeah. you don't think, you just don't. Now you can always leave a little bit, you know, there's nothing wrong with leaving a small portion. But the only idea is you want to take the profits and compound them somewhere else. You know, the guys that make the most money, they're always moving it constantly. It's like it's never just sitting in one spot. Like all the guys I met that do very well, they're always moving their money. It's never just sitting anywhere. It's too long. Makes sense. Okay, I think we'll close it out there. Uh, we've definitely had quite a lot of um, really, really good, concise, really insightful questions and responses from God's entry. Um, we'll probably look to do another one of these at some point in the future. Um, maybe, possibly, you know, in a couple of weeks from now, if we have that kind of uh, time for everyone. Uh, but yeah, that was that was really good. Um, does anyone have anything they want to add before we close out? I just thank you for having me on. Yeah, good chatting, guys. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate your comments. Really appreciate your support. Remember, do like and subscribe if you want to uh, continue supporting the content. And we'll see you guys in another video.